Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And shalom on to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. <clears throat> All right. Through the spirit, uh, I'm going to be in Zechariah 14. And I start at the top. It says, Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Right. And who's going to divide the, divide the spoil? It's going to be the, uh, the elect of Israel. The elect of Israel is going to divide the spoil, just like the heathen nations. When they came up against us and put us in captivity, they divide. We were their spoil, right? We were their. Uh, we were their reward. Um, you know, after the. Uh, let me see. We were the. We were the spoil that they divided, right? Stolen goods, right? Booty. That's another word for spoil. Uh, it, and here it is. I'll read it out of the definition um, from the uh, Oxford Dictionary. It says, Goods stolen or taken forcibly from a person or place. Similar words are uh, booty, loot, stolen goods, plunder, ill-gotten gains. All right? <clears throat> So, in that day, in the day of Yahweh, the elect are going to divide the spoil, right? We're, like, that's why we talk about the gold all over the planet Earth. Or even the gold that the elites are holding. We say that they're holding that gold for us because all them, all them riches, all that substance is going to come to the, come to the elect, come to the Israelites, right? Let me keep reading. For I will gather nations against for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And <clears throat> The word ravished, it means raped. So it's talking about these women are going to be getting raped. All right. When the chaos hits, you know, in the midst of Jacob trouble, you know, we're talking about the whole chaos, including the the day of Yahweh. You women are going to be humbled. All right. You're going to get, <laughs> you're going to get humbled. Right now you're on your high horse. You're on a pedestal. You have a lot of power because the, the, the wicked uh, Edomites have, uh, they're in that spirit of Egypt and they've put, they've, they've exalted the women to the point where the women have all this false sense of pride. You know, they're at the top of the world right now, man. So you, you women enjoy it while you can because Yahweh Hashem Yahashai is going to humble you women. You, you girls that want to be, uh, or you women that want to be uh, jumping from rod to rod. In that day, Yahweh is going to give you the rod. He's going to give you multiple rods because you're going to be getting raped and ravished, according to the scriptures. All right. Um. <coughs> Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle and his feet shall stand in the day up upon the mountain of olives which is before Jerusalem on the east and the mountain of olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a great a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains <clears throat> 
for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yeah, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah the king of Judah. And Yahweh, my power shall come, and all his all the saints with thee. Right, because we're gonna we're gonna have those new bodies, right? So you know the saints who are the Israelites, who are the you know the hundred forty four thousand. We're going to be a battle axe in that day, as it is written. Okay, let me let me get that verse real quick. This is once we get our new bodies. You know we're. Let's see, Jeremiah. It's lucky. Oops, I think it's a Jeremiah. 51 and 20 says <clears throat> thou art my battle axe and weapons of war for I will for with thee will I break in pieces the nations and with thee will I destroy kingdoms you see so Yahweh Shai, when we come back with Yahweh Shai, you know we get our new bodies you know we're changed we're going to be that battle axe. We're going to have those multiple, or multiple. Well, we are going to have multiple powers, but we're going to have those spiritual powers is what I meant to say. And remember, you have to understand Yahweh, he's a, he's a God of war. That's why they call him the Lord of hosts. It means the Lord of armies. So who's his, who's, uh, who's his army? It's going to be the angels. It's going to be the saints, the prophets. And, you know, the one leading is Yahweh Shai. And don't forget about Michael the Archangel because in the last day when the missiles are being shot to the ends of the world, when the chariots show up, I mean, it's going to, the, the heathen nations are going to have no chance to deal with the Lord of hosts, Yahweh's army, okay? It's going to be a, it's going to be an annihilation, all right? For some reason, every time I talk about this, uh, <laughs> this part of the of the scripture, I I think of um, of a Super Bowl because I, I you know I used to be a, a Denver Bronco fan and I remember when I was a kid they got beat down by the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl like fifty five ten and that's not even going to be you know it's going to be worse than that you see but I don't know why it's funny thought because every time I think about the annihilation that Yahweh Bashem Yahshua is going to put on the heathen nations. I think about that Super Bowl. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to uh, Zechariah 14. And uh, I'm at verse 6. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it's because why? Because of all the because the glory of the chariots, the glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, the missiles lighting up the whole the whole planet, <laughs> you know. Because when you have those nuclear missiles, when you, even when you see the videos of those uh, tests, when they test the missiles, it's it's just light. You see. It says, and in that and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and winter shall it be. I'm sorry. And in summer and in winter shall it be. Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. So guess what? When, when the destruction comes, when the last day, when the day of wrath comes, you ain't going to have to be arguing with these heathen. Or at least two thirds about the Lord's true name. Everybody's going to know the name Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the Father and the Son. They're not going to be coming with all these stupid names or come with these excuses saying, "Oh, you can call him whatever you want," or "The Lord knows my intentions." And, you know, I'm going to call him Jesus. You know, I, my God is Jesus because you know that's what these stupid ass people do. They're always arguing. And today, that's really, really what triggered me uh, today to do this lesson because I had this bimbo talking about you know oh jesus is the name and da, da, da. like just it was so annoying man you that's why this truth is vexing yesterday i did my lesson speaking on 
how this wisdom and knowledge, the more you increase with wisdom and knowledge, the more vexed you get. And this is part of it, you know. And then I had to just tell myself, you know what, you're giving your pearls to swine. Don't even, don't even tell the bitch the name, you know. Fuck her. She's going to be ravished anyway on the, on the day of the, the Lord, right? Or, or if she's, if she can make it that far. I threw curses on the bitch. And, but you know what? Like, this is what it is, man. You get so frustrated with these people, you know? And like I say, you don't want to be giving your pearls to swine. But when it comes to the names, you know, the true men, we we, we, we stand stiffly for those names. And, 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 and I actually, you know, I calmed myself down and I thought about it. I said, you know what? You know, I thank Yahweh for, for that I was so upset just about that one subject, about the name. Because that's what we're supposed to do as the men of Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. We're supposed to stand stiffly for those names, man. And it does, it irritates you. It pisses you the fuck off. You got these heathen, these two-thirds, and they want to be minimizing the importance of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yoshai's names. All right? Let me get this. Second Ezra 6. <laughs> No. Second and just two. Second and just two and forty seven. It says, Well, I'll start at forty six. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? Because the Lord's elect, his saints, we're going to get um, crowns be put on our head by Yahweh Shai. Right? Verse 47. And this, is, uh, this is during the crowning ceremony. 47. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? So, at the end of the day, you know, that's our spirit, is to stand stiffly for the names. And when I got so upset, because I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was pissed off. And, uh, you know, it's because why? Because that verse I just read, I'm standing stiffly for the name. And that's the spirit the elect will have, man. The elect are gonna stand stiffly for the names. You're gonna get pissed off when people are calling you know, our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the Father and the Son, they're calling them out their names. You know, when they're not call, they're not using the true names. When we have the true names, and instead of being a humbling yourself and meek, because the meek's going to inherit the kingdom, but if you're some stupid-ass bitch or stupid-ass heathen or stupid-ass man, and you don't know how to, you know, humble yourself and listen to the, the Lord's prophets and teach you the true names, then guess what? You're worthy of a missile for your ass. Or a famine. Or some type of horrific death that the Lord will bring to you. Alright? And you start mocking the names. You start mocking the Lord's servants. Guess what? Same thing. You're worthy of a, of a terrifying, horrific, gruesome death. Alright? And we actually will pray that on you. Because why? Because we stand stiffly for those names. Okay? Ecclesiasticus 17 and 10. <clears throat> And the elect shall praise his holy name. All right. And really, that's why I shouldn't even really get upset about it, because I know the, the prophecy and I know that it's only going to be the elect that's going to praise his name. Right. But we're still in this flesh. You know, it pisses us off when these heathen, these two thirds we don't don't want to, you know, acknowledge the importance of the true names. All right. Zechariah. <laughs> 14 and 9. I'm going to read it again. It says, And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth, and in that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Like like I said, we're not going to be teaching the names on the day of wrath. You're going to, People are going to know the true names. All right? People are going to know the names. You're not going to have... And, you know, people always say the same shit. Oh, it doesn't matter what you call him. You you know, he knows the my intentions. He knows as long as I'm praising Jesus and da 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 You know what I'm saying? And it's so irritating. Like I said yesterday in my lesson, um, 
let me grab it. Ecclesiastes 1.18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So you you know, when we know this stuff and you you know you you teach the names and people don't receive it, it, it not only sorrow, but it just pisses you off. And you'll be wanting the end to come tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we know the prophecies, there's other prophecies that have to be fulfilled, right? But that's how we are. We we're like we 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 want these prophecies to come tomorrow. We want this. We want the Lord's name to be one tomorrow. You know. Oh man! And, and this person in particular, the way they were, they started mocking and scoffing at the name and and uh, and, and the principle of of the true name. It was very irritating to say the least. All right, fucking bitch. Anyway, Zechariah 14, 10. And there was some... Oh, never, I ain't, I'm, I'm going to let it go already. It was irritating. <coughs> <coughs> Verse 10. And all the land shall be turned as, plain, as a plain from Geba to Ramon south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses, and men shall dwell in it, and there there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this is after the Lord establishes his one true name. The, when the Lord establishes, you know, he's going he's gonna to put this place in check. All right? Yahweh Bashem Yahshua are going to check this place, man. Check all you... You fucking heathen, you all, all you two thirds who want to use his name loosely, call him by different names that, you know, you, the Lord, if you know, you ain't read the Bible because the Lord tells you that he's going to have the true names given to his men. It tells you that in John 17 and 6. But you don't believe that part? You don't believe that part of the Bible? You know, John 17 and 6. I have manifested thy name. Unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world, thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right. So you always shy. What these these fucking heathen, these two thirds, they they they, they, they first of all they don't understand it. That's why when they read it, and they don't believe it, and a lot of them haven't never read it. So that's why that's why they reject the true names. All right, because they don't understand this simple verse right here. How about Shem Yashai? Hey, have manifested the names to the, to his a group of men in this world. It's not to everybody. Only the elect. Once those men get that those true names, only the elect are going to be the ones who receive those names. All right. You think you got a, a holy, uh, righteous spirit? Meanwhile, you calling on the name that the enemy gave you. Man, you're in for a big ass surprise. And, and, I, and really, the the prophets, we can't wait. We cannot wait till the Lord starts putting fire on your ass, you know? And I'm talking about nuclear fire. We can't wait. We can't fucking wait, man. Then you're going to, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to read about it right here in Zechariah. This is what's going to happen to you people who want to be rebellious and, and uh, reject knowledge and reject the true names. It says, and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That's not till after the destruction. Verse 12, and this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Well, guess what's going to cause that to happen? Nuclear missiles, nuclear fire. These people are going to be burnt up while they're standing on their feet. And like I said, we can't wait. I can't wait to see that bitch. Re all of them, not just that bitch who re rejecting the name, but everybody who rejects the truth. I can't wait to see this on these people because we're going to got to remember we're going to have a, 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 a we're going to have a good seat inside a chariot watching this destruction happening. All right. We're going to see them on their feet with their eyes consuming away in their holes and their tongue is going to consume away in their mouth and their flesh 
while they stand upon their feet. This is what's going to happen. All right. And these people, these same people who are, are rejecting the names and mocking the names and scoffing at the names, they're the same people that don't even know what the, the end entails. They, they're the same people who don't even realize that a missile's coming for their ass if they make it that far, like I always say. You see? These people don't know shit, man. They want to have a zeal. Well, let's get that. Because that, that bitch was an Israelite. And let me, let me read it. Romans. <clears throat> 10 and 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. Yeah, they have a, a zeal or a passion of the Most High, but it's not according to knowledge. It's according to the lies they've been taught. And they're hypocrites because, you know, the way they talk, like, you know, because this, this person in particular was, was uh, you know, trying to teach and saying how, oh, well, there's people out here that are so ignorant that you don't know because she was an Israelite she had a zeal she had a passion of the most high but it wasn't according to knowledge and our people are so rebellious and, and, and fucking hard headed that they um, you know they easily reject knowledge not even un unknowingly which you know what who cares unknowingly it don't matter if you didn't know it now how about Shemion Shai is going to burn your ass with fire because he set up his men he set up his prophets who are given you know, we're giving gems out there when we do the camps through the spirit. You know, it's not of us. It's not, I, I, it's not through us. It's the Hawa Bashem that puts a spirit on us to, to, to say what we say at the camps and on the videos. But it's, uh, you know, it is according to knowledge. All right. Because you know why? Because we're diligent. We, we, uh, we don't just get on a TikTok platform and just start speaking through our hearts. No, we speak according to what's written. We don't speak our own opinions. We're never going to hear one of the prophets say, well, I believe, well, this is what I think. This is what I believe. No, you ain't, we ain't, that's not how we get down, man. We don't, because guess what? What you believe, what I believe, it don't matter. What matters is what's written, all right? And what matters through the spirit. And what matters is what, who Yahweh Bashem Yahshua is dealing with right now, all right? He's dealing with his elect. He's dealing with his prophets. He's not dealing with the whole world. He's not dealing with all the uh, Christian, pagan Christian pastors. He's not dealing with uh, fucking Muslims. He's not dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses. He's not dealing with Catholics. The Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshua is dealing with his men like he always has since the, since the beginning. He's always had his prophets who are always holy, which means separate. We've always been separate. Coming against the grain, okay? I'm glad I did this lesson, though, because it's, you know, I was inspired because I was going to go work, but I said, you know what, hold up. I got to get on this lesson. I had it. Yeah, that's what it is. The, this starts, this this passion of ours, which is according to knowledge, starts to burn in us where we're like, shoot, I got to go do a lesson. You know? Fuck making money. I'm going to do a lesson. See? <clears throat> Anyway, let me go back to Zechariah 14. And, uh, 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor, and, hand, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. <laughs> See, and that tumult. Let me let me get that word real quick, because it's also in uh, what is it, Psalm eighty three. All right, so it says it's a, uh, a violent or noisy commotion or disturbance. Of a crowd or a mob uproar, a general outbreak, a riot, uprising, or other disorder. So that's what it is. And this says right here the great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor, and hand of his, or rise up against the hand of, of his brother, of his neighbor. So 
Yeah, that's that tumult. It's going to be a riot. And these people are going to be getting fucked up in that riot. And if you don't have the hedge and the protection of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you're just going to be a, a, a statistic, man. So let me keep reading. And Judah shall also fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. And that's dealing with those spoils that we started, we opened up with. And you're going to get silver, gold, raiment, everything in great abund abundance. All right? Apparel. Verse 15. And so shall be the plague of the horse and the mule of the camel of the ass and all the beasts of the shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king and the Lord of hosts and to keep the feast of tabernacle. Right? Because when all when when it's all said and done, all these heathen, all these two thirds, well of course the two thirds, because they're Israelites, but all the heathen nations are gonna follow our laws, our statutes, our commandments. And I should say Yahweh's laws, statutes, and commandments. Alright? They're gonna get in line. They're gonna get in line because if they don't, that nation will perish as it is written. All right, all right, we're at 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Right, so you, you, you're not going to be in good favor. You're gonna, your, your nation will perish. Your people will perish. Your posterity will be um, disannulled. If you don't follow the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, that's what it's going to be. And everyone's going to be calling on, on that one name like I read earlier on uh, Zechariah 14 and 9. All right? Everything's going to be in order once once we establish the order. But what we got to establish, because it says that we take the kingdom, right? It says that the Lord's saints will take the kingdom. It's not going to be given to us. We're going to take it. Let's get that real quick. Daniel 7 and 18. And remember, we're not going to take the kingdom in this fleshly body. We're going to take the kingdom when, when we have our, our, our celestial bodies. Okay? Daniel 7 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right? So it's not like Esau's going to say, all right. We give up. We're going to surrender the kingdom to you. No, we're going to take the kingdom. We're going to take back rulership. All right? And it's going to be violent. Just like they took, you know, just like they come across, across our people through multiple uh, ages and captivities. They took our people. They carried us into captivity. They carried us away in a, in a you know, captivity. They, the Lord's a, a power of balance, so he's going to you know, set it up to where we are going to do the same thing to them. We're going to take the kingdom. Zechariah 14, 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Right, if you don't, if you don't feed, worship, you don't follow the laws, the rules... Of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and guess what? You're gonna be you're gonna be dealt with. You're not gonna you're not gonna exist. You're gonna have to you know you you have to do as uh, you know the Lord commands, or otherwise be you're gonna perish, right? Let me grab that real quick. Isaiah sixty twelve. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. See that? If you don't get in line as a heathen nations, you're going to perish. Simple as that. Everybody's going to be following the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai in that day. And guess what? Everybody's going to know the laws. Like right now, we got to teach the laws to our people and to the heathen and to the two-thirds. But guess what? In that day, you're going to know the law and you're going to know you're guilty and the Lord's going to 
cause you to perish if you if you break the laws in that day. Because guess what? The law is going to be carried out. Right here in Babylon, we don't we can't carry out the laws. Right? Zechariah 14. And we're going to be like a pack of dogs on your ass. You hear the dogs barking. Everything's a spirit, man. You see? Zechariah 14, <coughs> 20. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto Yahweh, and the and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like bowls before the altar. Yeah, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and they all that and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and see if therein. In that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of the hosts. Right. I mean, you ain't gonna have the heathen in 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 the house in our you know in our uh, in our church in our presence in our in our in our uh, tabernacles. Only ones that are going to be permitted to be in the in the tabernacles in that day are the Israelites. All right, and there's going to be order. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and close out. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Kadash, the Blanus goes up to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching the teaching me the truth. And I also want to acknowledge all my brethren who are out there pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth and shalom to the elect of Israel. Shalom. Shalom.